Today we're going to be working on the center console and making it out of wood.
All right, so here's the center console mock-up in wood. However, there's a few mistakes on it and I'm gonna have to redo it. But, you know, I started out with the cardboard and then I had to change a few things from the cardboard. And so originally the cardboard probably came down here and then came across uh, and then cut down. And so I ended up making this thicker because I needed to get past certain areas of the uh, shifter and things like that. Uh, however, you know, that jigsaw that I use just sucks. And you could see like little divots and stuff that is really obvious with the router because not everything was perfect. And I was just going to bondo some of that stuff in because this is all going to get wrapped anyways, so who cares. Uh, but my decision to make this go higher and then shave it back a little bit more got right in the way of the cup holder. I have no idea how I missed that while I was doing this, but I did. And so... Uh, not too thrilled about that. So I'm going to have to recut this to come out to this black line and then cut down as originally planned. And uh, I just want to get all these lines a lot straighter and stuff. So I have my width, I have my dimensions, I have exactly how I'm going to put all these, uh, uh, I don't know what you call them, but the areas that the panels are going to lay into. And, uh, you know, we should be good to go.
All right, so I wanted to show you a little bit uh, what's going on here. So for you people that have not done woodworking, um, this is a nice little sled that's made up. And what it is is you got two pieces that go through the actual tracks that you see there. And what this allows you to do is get more precise cuts as you slide through. Now, I think this is only 20 inches, so um, I had to start and cut some big pieces down and then I could actually put it in here and cut stuff on an angle or do whatever I need to do. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, woodworking in the past and so I made this up to do like drawers and things like that to just have perfect cuts. Now, the one thing I don't have, which would be a great modification uh, that I could have used today, is if you're going to do like angle cuts or something like this, it'd be nice to have a built-in uh, clamp that clamps the wood down so it won't move, and then you run it through the sled. Um, I didn't have that, so I just used finger pressure to hold stuff down, which worked fine until I was doing like 45 degree angle cuts and stuff. Then it started getting a little dicey, so I'd just take a wedge or something and shove it in that area to you know keep it from moving but it's not perfect but uh you know doing straight cuts on this is amazing and uh with the clamp you could do the 45 cuts and, and angle cuts and stuff like that random angles so all right so what you're seeing here is the final mock-up um this is going to probably be aluminum but i just got a real piece of uh red cedar real thin piece of red cedar that would do the same thing uh, uh, thickness wise in its place and then uh, over here I'm giving myself some distance for um, the leather wrap and also paint uh, since this is going to probably be painted unless I go to a shop and they tell, tell me it'd be better to you know do like a silver leather or something like that I just figured it would stain easier as you can see I have different pieces that will go in here and then of course this will all be mocked up and bondoed and whatever whatever it needs to make it look super pretty and since you know I'm not doing wood grain or stain or anything like that this will actually be uh, you know if it is painted then it's going to go through you know the same exact car paint that I did for my uh, parts there so uh, so this will look perfect uh, when it's done and then I'm assuming here I'm going to do a, uh, you know, some kind of uh, aluminum panel that's fully like CNC'd out or something. So that's kind of what I'm guessing. Not exactly sure, but this came out way better than the last one that I did. Uh, I got those straight cuts with the skill saw, and then the router just worked perfectly on top of that. So this thing's pretty much good to go. Um, the other thing I did is originally I was using just as a, a starter was plywood for my little braces. Problem with plywood is, you know, the screws don't really hold into it that well, uh, at least not going through it this direction. So what I did is I chopped up some actual solid. I want to believe this is uh, this is ash. No, actually, this might be poplar, but uh, it's solid wood, so you can put a screw in it different ways, and it's going to hold a lot better. Uh, so might I think it's poplar had some left over from some furniture stuff I did and it's holding way better way better and I'm not going to keep drilling and undrilling these things they're going to be you know I'll probably pull it apart once to do some stuff and then put it back together so uh, so yeah I am really really happy with this and you know any little flaws like this I'll just you know bondo in or fill it in with primer and uh, sand it down and then I'll have to uh, you know, uh, seat my uh, screw heads. So, uh, yeah, it's coming on pretty good. Uh, you know, I wasted a day on the other template, but uh, is what it is. It's getting pretty toasty out. Uh, summer's come a lot earlier this year, so I'm going to probably uh, drill some holes in here and then call it a day.
So as you can see, the center console has just come out amazing. It looks flawless. I mean, it really came out really nice. I'm so glad that I redid, uh, used the first one as kind of a mock-up and then I got the lines a lot straighter. Um, I did have to route out the uh, cup holder hole a little bit bigger than what the hole saw would do. What I ended up doing with that was actually taking a black marker, kind of going around the edge of the circle and then taking a jigsaw and just slowly nudging away. Cause if I was gonna sand it or anything like that, it would have taken like literally hours to try to knock that down. So the uh, jigsaw just worked out perfectly. And since the cup holder has a little ring edge around it, if you will, uh, you're not gonna see anything. And plus, you know, at this point, I think it's probably gonna be all leathered and I'm not gonna paint this thing. Um, so it's gonna work out fine. What was the difficulty level of, of doing this wood project? I don't wanna say it was super easy. Um, it's just having the right tools. If you have the right tools, it was easy. If you're a woodworker, it was not a big deal. I don't claim to be a woodworker in a sense. I, you know, just like building this car. I don't claim to be a car builder, but I build cars. <laughs> and I don't claim to be a woodworker, but I do woodworking. And so I'm one of those kind of project guys. I research and then I do something new and interesting and it floats my boat, you know, that's kind of how it is. And so uh, it was a little bit difficult for me in the sense that, you know, having the right tools and you saw one of the ways I got around it was uh, I was trying to think of what would be a nice flat plane where I could use my skill saw, but everything is, you know, solid on each side. And what I ended up using was my actual table saw because the ends come out and there's a nice gap that I could cut the blade through and so that actually worked out perfect. So if you just use your noggin a little bit and try to figure out what, what you could do, you could actually pull this one off. Um, now, the other thing is, is if I didn't have the bench seat and I had the two you know, regular seats, I would have been able to make the console longer and put two cup holders in it. Um, I might have been able to put two cup holders in it if I didn't have the automatic transmission because the manual transmission is way smaller. And so there would have been more room for stuff to get in. I could have maybe had a higher handle coming up on the gear shift. Not really sure about that since I don't actually have a manual transmission, but looking at pictures, they're just way smaller than this behemoth that I put in here. And, uh, but having those two separate seats, I could have done a lot more, you know, bunch of chargers, different things all in the back end instead of in the front. So, uh, you know, good stuff to know. So the last thing I want to mention is whenever you're doing any kind of woodworking, one thing that you don't want to do is you do not want to lay your uh, plywood, if you will, flat or any kind of wood uh, flat on a table or something like that for a long period of time. What will happen is all the sides that are not on the table are evaporating moisture and the one side isn't and your wood will actually curl. And so since it's hot in here, I'm actually sweating, uh, since it's hot in here and uh, I am done with my center console. I am not gonna leave it in the garage in case it rains and it's 100 degrees and I'm just like beating this thing up. It's going to 60, it's going to 100, going to 60, going to 100. Um, I have it back in my house where it's a nice dry environment or we'll say consistent environment at least. And what I'm gonna have to do is actually shoot this thing and seal it so that way uh, over the years, it's gonna stay straight and it's not gonna be warping and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And so uh, for that, I'll probably be using shellac because shellac is kind of the, the first thing that you do in woodworking to seal stuff up. So I don't really care what this thing looks like because it's gonna be wrapped, uh, but I'll shoot a nice thing on there. And that's on all pieces of wood, the, the cross brackets, everything. Uh, you don't really have to worry about the cross brackets too much because it's just the end pieces that are actually touching wood and the rest of it's open. But if I'm shooting, I'm shooting everything. Simple as that. So. I'm going to go ahead and shoot everything, get it all sealed up, and, uh, you know, save that for another day. Until next time, have a great day.